What's up everyone? It's the interview queen Alicia Two here and be sure to watch True Heel Heat. This is the knockout artist, Chris Hero. And if you're looking for some true heel heat, you better listen to the boys. Alright, this is Dan Housen here, very nice, very evil. You are watching True Heel Heat. Probably should have had MJF do this, but here we are. What's up, True Heel Heat? True Heel Heat. What's up? Oh! Hello, hello, hello. It is me. It is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. We are live on the True Hill Heat Sports and Entertainment, as well as True Hill Heat's Facebook and Twitter for our X-Men 97 Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2, Review and Discussion. And I am joined by my esteemed colleagues here, or who are X-Men fans who have watched the premiere episodes for the new series that we are very excited to talk about. It is finally here. It is finally returned. And I am joined by I am a big X-Men and comic book fan. He is the marijuana enthusiast, the three-time, three-time, three-time baby-making champion. This is Ness. You're muted, sir. <laughs> You know what's crazy? I knew that was going to happen. Uh, so let me try this again. True Hills, what is the deal? Glad to be here on this lovely Sunday morning with the good brother and good sister of the True Hill Heat family reviewing X-Men 97, which I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait for the review, but couldn't wait to watch it because growing up, this was one of, one of my childhood staples. You know, that theme song, can't get it out of my head. So just seeing it now, in 2024 as an um, as an adult yes know, all the nostalgia coming back and i just i feel like a little kid watching it honestly so it's just different that i was smoking weed while i was doing it so it's <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that was different you know i wasn't smoking weed back when i was like fucking seven or eight years old but you, you was eating that. cereal you was I'm eating cereal, cereal. Yeah. It's, a t it's a totally different way to enjoy it now <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. It's totally different experience. You can have a blood and cereal at the same time. Um, <laughs> and we are joined by the better half of the true draw, the true draw of the true draw. She is the one, the only Wendy. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited to review X-Men 97. Like, I was so anxious. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I would say, like, growing up as a kid, like, my, I would say my earliest memories would be home Saturday morning watching X-Men, Spider-Man, the animated series, Batman, the animated series, Power Rangers. Like, that was part of my childhood. So watching, as 
as Ness said, watching it now as an adult, it's like, it puts you back in that state, like childlike stage. Like it puts, it make, it, it just brings you back. It's like you're a kid again, which is great. Uh I prepped myself well for it because I rewatched the animated series for our everything we need to know before the premiere uh, video and to just get myself refreshed. And I was like blown away of like the difference of watching as adult from watching it as a kid. And I remember I was on that same lineup. You forgot Bobby's world. Bobby's world was included yes. in there when, when one of the other, when I, uh, one of the other shows was off season, Bobby's world would jump up in there in that mix of the Saturday morning on Fox. So yes, I was, I was a, Big Saturday morning on Fox, but X Men was my favorite series. But to we rewatch it as an adult, I'm like, yo, they're talking about bigotry, they're talking about homophobia, they're talking about racism. Um, they're in a fucking slave island in like the sixth episode of the goddamn series. Like, yo, it was like, they, yo, I was like, I was like. I was a fucking kid. I, I was just into, oh, X-Men, jumping up and down. Oh, fight scene. Cool shit. I was like, the dialogue in this shit. I was like, I was learning shit. Yeah. It's sure. deep. It's deep. It's deep. But uh, I, I'm i glad you guys are here with me to talk about it. We got in the chat with us, Vala B, one of our members over on the True Hill Heat Wrestling YouTube channel. Uh, we also got Nikki Boy in the chat who says, uh, same here, Wendy. All those shows, I wasn't around when they started, but thank God for the rerun block when I was a kid. Absolutely. It was, Fox had it on lock, yo. You said Power Rangers? I was like, oh, yeah. Power yeah. I remember when Power Rangers started on Saturday mornings and then it became syndicated and you could watch it every afternoon mm -hmm. when you got home from school. It kind of kind of brings up our ages. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with that comment, like, oh damn. I mean, I already, I already watched Quiet on the Set. I was, I was like, I was oh, like, yeah. and they, I mean, that's another one we could, we could do a whole discussion and video on it right there because I, I feel like I got jacked. I feel like I was jacked at gunpoint from my childhood yeah. after watching that, and that, and that took me back because I was like watching that shit when they had the one, the one part with the uh, black, the black actor when I was like six years old when all that mm -hmm. started in 1994, and they showed that one where he was the superhero with the noses. And I was like, yeah, that definitely looked like dicks. But when I was a kid, <laughs> yeah. There. No, but you know what it is? Like, you just said it earlier. Like, when you just said it, like, when we're watching, when you was watching X-Men, like, as a child, you don't realize the stuff that they talk about or their stuff that they show. And then as an adult, you're like, whoa, like, they were really like they really talked about issues, but like as a kid, you don't realize what, like you don't realize the, like how true, like the stuff that they were showing on that show, you know? Yeah, like uh, all the mutant thing, like the whole comic book started with uh, basically the, um, it's a, a basically a play off the freedom mm -hmm. rights movement and mm -hmm. Magneto is supposed to be Malcolm X and uh, Charles Xavier is supposed to be uh, Ma uh, Martin Luther King. So that's what it all is basically based on. But I was surprised that it had that much in the animated series. And now I've gone down the rabbit hole to watching everything X-Men. I've been watching X-Men Evolution. I was like, X-Men Evolution was on Kids WB. And I was like, they don't have none of that shit that the animated series go. They was like, they, they cleaned that shit up for the 2000s and 2010s. They was like, nah, we can't, we can't have all that shit. The 90s, they, these kids nowadays, they smarter than the 90s kids. Well, I uh, can't say the same about the kids these days. They eat fucking Tide Pods and shit like that. So, yeah. Got a point there. Got a point <laughs> there. They believe everything they see on social media. They want to try all the trends. And it's Absolutely. Like, it's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> We also got Nikki Boy in the chat, the Negro Buck, who says, gotta love the woke mob uh, bitching and complaining. Just goes to show that they never watched the OG show or picked up on an X-Men comic book in their life. We also got Vala B who says, re-watching it as an adult, it was all the real shit you know. One thing is the instance uh, instances of them calling each other by their uh, code names all the time, even at home. That was so 90s. Yes. Yes. The fact that they always called Wolverine Wolverine was much different from when we got into the 2000s and the, the movies where they called them Logan all the time. Yeah. And then, and then also, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> also oh, with man. also with the with the animated series, they called him Magnus. They called uh, Magneto Magnus because the comic book. It wasn't until like X Men three hundred that they gave away his actual real name of Eric uh, Lencher. That was a, that's what that was why one of the parts that we're going to talk about with the what was it I think it was episode two after the mm -hmm. whole big reveal at episode one when Rogue calls him Eric that's a big deal because it, it shows oh, that they're yeah. close no not only does it show that they're close but it's the first time that Magneto has been called Eric on the animated series. Uh, Nikki Boy says, I really need Disney to give uh, Spider-Man the Animated Series the X-Men 97 treatment. That was my jam, and they ended on a huge cliffhanger. I mean, why the hell not? Why the hell not? I mean, they're coming out with X-Men. I know I know they're coming out with Spider-Man freshman year, but it's basically like the prequel to the live-action Homecoming. <clears throat> like what the that Spider-Man from the live-action was doing before he uh makes his debut in um civil war uh captain america civil war oh, and then finally before we get into the show we also got uh nikki boy who says yes sp3 x-men evolution was great when i was growing up and we also got vala b says fuck just notice nessus t let's show off <laughs> nessus t here which is the famous x-men uh wolverine meme of him looking at the picture of gene gray and <laughs> yeah. Being upset that uh, he can't have no parts of that no more at the time. <laughs> he couldn't caught them cheeks, man. You why you why you going after homie's girl? Uh, he should have caught them cheeks. On. There's a whole lot of that going on. <laughs> There's a whole lot of love triangles going on here. But let's talk about the first episode of X Men '97. Uh, this is coming. This is basically not a new, completely new series. This is playing off of the X Men, the animated series. We talked all about it on the Everything we, You Need to Know before the series started. That this is basically a continuation from the season finale of X Men uh, season five. But you don't even need the real rundown of that because they kind of go over it in the opening here, where they talk about Xavier assassination last year at the hands of Henry Gyrich. Uh, they changed the design of Gyrich from the, the it was different artists at the end of season five. That's why season five sucks. And the second half of season five looks completely different from the rest of the animated series. But it's a different design of Henry Gyrich from uh, season five to what we see in this first episode here. It's the, what he originally looked like in the series, basically. Uh, people have become more sympathetic to mutants because of what Gyrish did to Charles Xavier. They say that he has passed away due to that attack. But things don't look that well for our friend Roberto da Costa, who for comic book fans, they might know that name very familiar. He is Sunspot, a member of the New Mutants. Uh, he has been slapped with a power suppressing collar and brought to a warehouse by members of the Friends of Humanity. Uh, what did you guys remember about the Friends of Humanity? Felt very January 6th-like. Friends of Humanity, what's the clan? Like, rewatching the animated series, I was like, they come in in season two with a big thing that looks like the clan, but it says F O H. They're wearing hoods. I was like, oh shit. They had the clan in an animated series when I was like five years old. Well, if you don't make them the clan, you know, you can get away with it. But if you just flat out make them. <laughs> The KKK, that's going to be a problem. Friends of Humanity are a group of he a group of humans who are uh, very aggressive towards uh, mutants and want to wipe them out. Uh, he's uh, Sunspot is basically going to be uh, sold off to a buyer for ten grand. They talk about how the buyer is looking for mutants as target practice, and uh, Roberto tries to offer them some of his family riches. He says he's the heir to the DaCosta throne, and in exchange for his freedom, but uh, he 
yeah, they aren't about the money. They say, uh, they say no. Uh, Sunspot didn't even uh, try to use his powers on them. They say before he got the collar on, he says that he's not like the other human and not like the other mutants. He's one of the good ones. And the FOH respond by uh, raising their their arm cannons, uh, which he was like. Basically, it's the same conversation that we got in the first episode when Jubilee got kidnapped by um, the Sentinel army. And they were like, basically, she was like, I I can't control what I am. I was born this way. And he was like, "Uh, I wish you weren't born, basically. (laughs) Only good mutant is a dead mutant. (laughs) Yes. yes. Yeah, that's the the kind of response we got. (laughs) That's basically what we got. Then, but then the uh, mutant that says that he has a claw on his face, so you can see that he's dealt with the uh, with the mutants before. The human, uh, the from the, the member of the FOH, he basically breathes, but we see the air that he's breathing, and then we get the big intro for Storm, Mistress of the Elements. I absolutely love this fucking intro for Storm. I see uh, Wendy over there clapping. What did you think about this yeah. intro for Storm? I'm like, yes, queen, come through with the lightning and all that. Ah, she looks amazing. I love her. I love how they changed her look a bit, like with her hair. Like they gave her this really cool, like mohawk thing. Like, like, you know, it was really cool. Like, I'm glad they didn't really bring her back fully as like how she was like originally. Like they gave her, like, it's so refreshing. You know, she still is Storm, but you know, they gave her a really cool look like a yeah. cool style um i also like the fact that that the original voice actress that did the voice of storm they brought her back so like a couple of the voice actors that did the voices of the original characters from x-men they brought them back and they reprised their role which i thought it was really cool because i'm like how can you find someone that can do that voice you know, exactly. Swarm. Like you can't find somebody like that. So I love the fact that they brought the original actress back, but she looks amazing. You can't mess with her. Come on. She's bad. <laughs> She is an omega level uh, mutant. They she tells she warns them. She tries to talk peace with them, but they start uh, shooting at her with the new Sentinel uh, Sentinel tech, <laughs> and uh, this leads to Bishop joining in. He takes some of their Sentinel tech, empowers it back at them. I love uh, Bishop being in here because he was one of my favorites from the from the uh, animated series. But it begs the question of how the hell is Bishop here? Because if you know the story of Bishop. He's from the future and he's only here if he has like a timer on his wristband, but it never went past like one or two episodes. So how has he been here so long? What happened between Charles's death and Bishop coming here? Why he's here? And I think from the listing of the show titles, we might get that answer, but he was here. They were here to make the save for Sunspot to rescue a fellow mutant. Uh, they are eventually, uh, the Sentinel Tech blows up a machine and they're knocked out. Uh, they always, they, they, I love the, the member of the uh, FOH says, uh, their X-Men are like roaches. You see one, one's bound to come after. And then uh, Sunspot tries to run away, but then we get a big blast in the wall and talk about someone being redeemed. Fuck! Yeah, Cyclops, after what the movie did to this man, this whole first episode felt like a redemption arc for Cyclops because in the animated series, he was a very multifaceted uh, character because he doesn't have control of his power. He is the only control he has is when he has a goddamn visor on. If he opens his if he opens his eyes, he could take out a freaking block. Like he it's it's a very complex character, but he's also the leader. He has all these different uh, you know, different relationships, whether it's friendships or ex-girlfriends in the X-Men. Uh so we got it. Uh he comes in and he totally takes out basically all the FOH members. I love the fact that he was using his blaster to go- glide off the floor. What did you think about the fighting? sequence with uh cyclops taking out on the foh nest no that, that was dope first of all you know the superhero entrance is always going to be a thing he came in just like you said he redeemed himself because over the course of i don't know how many years definitely over a decade or two they have hoed cyclops you know for the most part people see him as you know this emotional guy that can't keep his woman happy 
This is yeah. like all of like you know dealing with Wolverine on the side and things like that. But this this episode, he definitely came back with a fighting spirit. You know, we watch a lot of New Japan, so he definitely came in. He wasn't fucking around whatsoever, and that's just just the start of like you said his redemption because he's yeah he's he's not the Boy Scout that everybody knows him for. Like he was here to fuck shit up. Yo, he came in, he was wrecking shop, but he got caught up. Uh they they caught him with the with the little uh little thing that swung around him and tied him up. He was all tied up, and then the FOH member takes away his visor, and basically they think, oh, without the visor, he can't he can't do anything. And he says, No, stop, please. Stike, and then he opens his eyes and takes out the FOH members. They get sunspot. Made it, making the save here. This was a great first scene. This is just great. Everything. And they filmed that whole Cyclops scene like it was a one take. Like he was fucking Daredevil in the Netflix series. It was great. It was great. Uh, no, uh, 10 out of 10, no notes for me. What about y'all? Yeah, definitely 10 out of 10 for that fight scene. Agreed. Absolutely. I love how I. it was a great introduction to the, um, to the X-Men. Like it was a great, especially like if you never watch X Men ever in your life, like this, like is a great introduction. Like how they introduced them, great. Absolutely love it. We got a bunch of y'all watching over on the Twitter page. We appreciate y'all. Drop the heart over there, and if you will, jump on over to the YouTube channel for True Hill Heat Sports and Entertainment. Go over and subscribe over there. We are pushing, trying to hit that one thousand mark over here, and pushing on the channel, doing more entertainment content, and we'll be doing reviews of of X Men ninety seven moving forward. We also got Frantic World in the chat here. He says, "I always like uh, Cyclops." in the cartoon series and yes Vala B smash the like if you're watching over here on the YouTube channel as well if you're watching us on Twitter jump over on YouTube drop us a like over there it helps out helps out the YouTube algorithms very very much here yes 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 he's also Vala B see Vala B is looking out for us he says let's grow enough for those super chats absolutely let's get to 1000 keep on watching get our watch hours up uh, we got Frantic World who says Storm is the MVP so far this season we also got Bala B who says, you know how I feel about that Cyclops fight sequence. Express myself on multiple occasions. That fight was sublime. It just instantly made you be like, oh, I fucks with Cyclops. <laughs> like, like, just in case you forgot. Oh, yeah, I fucks with him. Uh, then we go back with our next scene. We go to the Academy and we see... Uh, we see, you know, people playing outside who aren't from Academy X. Uh, they appear on. No, we see uh, basically a, a newspaper like flash across the screen, which is of, the, I think, the Daily Bugle because uh, it says photos by Peter Parker and the story is by Eddie Brock, which makes me think we're going to get a crossover. If not this season, maybe next season with Spider-Man. Because Spider, because we had the X Men crossover to the Spider Man animated series, but we never had Spider Man actually show up on X Men the animated series. We only saw his hand during one of one uh, big saga that they had. Uh, but we go to the next day at the X Mansion. Cyclops is telling Gambit how Storm and Bishop could have been hurt and that they really needed Gambit there. Gambit is wearing one of his slutty half shirts from the 90s while cooking. Um, what? Gamb Gambit is a slut. Gambit is always horny. Let's just be real here, folks. <laughs> it's a, it's, that's a fact. That's a it's fact. a fact. It's a fact, it's, it's, man. It's, it's even funnier. That the fact that he is so like this with a person that he can't really can't touch, <laughs> so <laughs> he doesn't care. Like he really he does not care. He's, he doesn't care. The, he doesn't what care. we re what we realize if you watch X Men the animated series and these first two episodes of X Men ninety seven, Gambit is a really big fan of edging. Anyway, uh, Cyclops is still worried about how things go down, but Rogue and Gambit dismiss him a bit. They say because let's be real, Sentinels kind of suck, but they kick their butts all the time. They take out more Sentinels than they know, and Rogue says that you know, uh, well first. Gambit says he's more focused on the Benets, and then <laughs> Rogue comes and kind of makes his save and backs him up while they're putting plates on the uh, table. And then uh, to to 
ease him up a bit. Gambit throws one of his cards at Cyclops, and that leads to Jean coming in, a pregnant Jean who's doing, I guess, yoga or jazzercise, I don't know, uh, uh, throws the, the card away. That's after we get a walking Xavier who shows up and agrees with the others, and uh, Psych to needs to get the stick out of his ass and stop worrying, but it's actually more in disguise. Uh, he shows up in his more natural form. What do y'all think about the the morph neutral form that is now being introduced in X-Men 97 in comparison to morph the white male that he was in uh in the animated series in the animated series what do y'all think so um i actually like this version of morph more so um i get that they're trying to go with the he's um non-binary so mm -hmm. is this as a an individual he doesn't have to be a woman or a man. He just is, I don't want to say a thing to offend anybody, but it's like a thing because that's what a shape shifter such as himself would be. So it kind of goes with it. Also him being a mutant, he doesn't have to conform to just one gender or just one person as a, uh, as a look or whatever going forward. So I actually like it. And, and again, 2024, people are a little bit more, I don't want to say sensitive, but they take it more into account of these type of uh, conversations and topics. So this, along these lines, it does um, fit the mold for what he's supposed to be. And that's anything he wants to be instead of just being one person or one thing. Absolutely agree there. What about you, Wendy? I 100% agree with what Ness said. You know, I like I like this. I like I like the route that they took with his um, with his look. You know, um, like I did look up like, you know, he is non-binary. So it may like looking at it. I was like, OK, that makes sense as to like why he like why he looks like that, you know, because when I first watching it. I was just like, okay, maybe, you know, cause I remember in the original, he was like just a regular white man. And then I'm thinking in my head, okay, like I know he got brainwashed or something and like maybe like they gave him a different look, whatever. And then this is, and like when they save him, this is how he got brought back, right? But then reading, but then reading up his like, his character and then seeing how it says he's non-binary and then watching it again, I'm like, okay, that makes sense why he looks like that. I just love how, even though it's like based on like the original, like the '90s version, I love how they bring elements to like this generation. Like it's yeah. fresh; it's not it's not washed up or anything like that. Like it's they bring they bring elements from the past, but they're also bringing something that's current, and they put it together, and, and that's great. And I, I love his look. Absolutely agree with you as well. We got uh, next, we see Roberto waking up in Beast's lab. Uh, happy and go lucky Beast. We see some of his books on the uh, cabinet. He's whistling and listening to some classical music. Uh, Sunspot points out that uh, Beast is blue uh, when he wakes up, when he says you're very blue. Uh, Beast jokes that his observation is very astute. Then Jubilee shows up. Uh, Cyclops and Storm also show up wanting to talk to Roberto Jubilee gives him the rundown about, uh, you know, that's Beast. Uh, this is, he's got some future tech, which is from Bishop. And this is the X Mansion. Uh, she, uh, we get Roberto who dismisses the the, the X team, who basically, basically by offer them, offering them some money for the save, but wanting to leave as soon as possible. Uh, they can't let him go just yet due to the danger that FOH currently pose. And Roberto snarks that this is basically another they're kidnapping, but Jubilee says they are not kidnapping. They are here to help mutants, even yuppies like you. Which I heard when I heard the word yuppies, I was like, "Yes, this is a '90s reference that I remember." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they and they did the frozen take on Roberto with his mouth open, which was also very funny. 
Uh, we also then you get uh, Jubilee. Uh, he says, "What is there to do fun around here?" And Jubilee uh, sends him to the danger room for assimilation against Magneto for some funds. Uh, he does. He's not into it very much. Uh, this is another uh, another reference to future mutants as well. When Jubilee asks if Roberto can shoot gold balls from his body, because I know another of the new mutants can do that. Uh, Wolver he's, he's trying to get him to basically use his powers in the danger room, but then Wolverine sneaks up on him and uh, get, gets him with the claws like right at his head, and Sunspot basically is like, oh, nice trick, Jubilee, and he says, stop simulation, and he says, show some respect for the lady, bub. Uh, <laughs> and says, oh, how about some fun this way, and basically scares off Roberto. Meanwhile, the gang is discussing things with Val Cooper, uh, Cyclops, and uh, Jean Grey. Uh, the, the United Nations had destroyed all the Sentinels and Bulver Trash is MIA. We get, uh, she assures them that they aren't making any more Sentinels and they will keep looking into how the Friends of Humanity got their tech. But Cyclops struggles to trust their whole nonsense that she's saying. And I want to say this now. Val Cooper. Mystique. Mm. I think Val Cooper is Mystique. What do y'all think? I didn't think about it till now. And that can that would be a plot twist. I'm here for it. I'm she's helping, it. she's helping the X-Men. She's staying close to them, keeping track of them, helping Magneto. We will talk about it in the next episode. Like, yeah, I was like. Like it was, it wasn't until the next episode that I, I was like, I put the theory together, and I heard it somewhere else. Someone else said it too. I was like, yeah, okay. all right, I'm a, could be true, could be true. I just wanted to put it out there. Let us know in the comments if you think if you think Val Cooper is Mystique. Uh, we then we get uh, Gene and Scott. They start to reminisce about their past. They look at the uh, picture of the original team. Uh, the original team, I think, in the picture consisted of uh, Professor X, Beast, Angel, Cyclops, Gene Gray as Miss Marvel, and Iceman. I believe that was all the members that was in the picture. Uh, then you get uh, Gene wonders if they should consider starting a life beyond the X-Men now that the baby's on the way. The others are family, but they need to think about the baby. Scott protests, but Gene knows he wants to protect everyone. But this is the one time he should be willing to let things go and stop worrying about the X-Men all the time. Then a basketball crashes through the window and smashes into a portrait of Xavier and the, uh, the old team. We get the, the team is playing basketball outside in their uh, OG basketball gear that they had in the comics and the uh, season three of the animated series. Jubilee had blasted Logan with some fireworks for what he did to Roberto, scaring him off, and Jubilee is worried about him. Cyclops calls them and the other X-Men out. He says that, uh, why doesn't Wolverine use his nose to go uh, find Roberto and tells the other, uh, other team that they're being lazy kind of shits at this point. Uh, sends them off looking for Roberto. Cyclops later then tells Gene that he he knows someone who can find Bolivar Trask, the man who killed Professor X. So, what did you think about all that went down here? The little conversation with Gene and Cyclops, which really has paid off a little bit more in in the episode two that we saw, but. It was kind of a setup, a setup plot of oh, Cyclops and Gene may lead the team. What did you think about that whole conversation and then uh, the whole scene with the basketball, Wendy? Um, I thought that well, obviously, like you know, for them to have a conversation about like should we leave, you know, I think, I think Gene is just just like thinking like you know, yes, we have the X Men, but like. We have, like, we're not just mutants. We're not just part of the X-Men. Like, we're, you know, we want to have our own lives. And I guess she was just thinking about, like, her life with um, with Scott. And then, like, them having a family, you know, it's, like, it's a really, it's a tough situation. Because, like, honestly, we know that Scott doesn't want to leave. But he also has to think about, like, you know, okay, I'm about to have a kid. You know, like, I need to think about myself and think about what I want. 
you know. Um, I will say though the basketball scene was funny. Wolverine, I don't know, like I love how he has like a little play side, like a playful side. Like he's like playful and, and it's like I, I love the fact that he loves to mess around with Scott. And the scene, there's a um the scene that that really was just like Ooh, like they always have, they always have one up each other was when he said, um, you know, oh, the, the only know, thing worse, the only thing worse about after, all the Sentinels and stuff like that. No, of, no of Xavier you know, being gone that, is, is, is you. you. And I was like, Oh, that's like deep. I'm like, Oh, he got you. I was like, shots fire. <laughs> like, damn. I was just like, Oh my gosh. Like, damn Wolverine. Like, Oh, you're gonna like hurt him right there. But um but yeah, I just it's what can I say? It's a tough it's a tough situation, you know, it's a tough situation, especially like when you're so close to these like when they're so close and you know, it's like they wanna they wanna be there, they wanna help, but then and they wanna run the school, but also they have to think about like okay, like, it's just that, like, there's more to that, you know? Like, we want to have our own lives. We want to have a family. You know, we want to live happily. So it's like, how can they do that? So it puts them in a really tough um, situation. Yeah, it made sense when they were having the conversation of, like, you know, actually move on from the team. And I know at the end of season four, the original plan was for Gene and Scott to leave the team. And then it was going to be, like, new members. I think Bishop and uh, his sister was supposed to, Shard was supposed to join the team, as well as, I think, Archangel was supposed to rejoin the team. And then it was uh, Cyclops and Gene was going to leave and Professor X was going to leave. So there is, like, there and there is a bunch of comic books stories about gene and cyclops leaving the team as well so i yeah and i, and I did also enjoy the little tension because you always got to have a nod to the ongoing love triangle that is wolverine cyclops and gene with uh, mm -hmm. him getting into scott's face and then as soon as gene axes him he's like okay let's go <laughs> Yeah. And that and that was a little bit paid off when we got to our next scene uh, here as we go with the X-Men tracking uh, Sunspot down at a nightclub where they all split up to look for him. We get a scene with Rogue uh, lamenting how everyone is getting down and touching skin. And if anyone rubbed up against them, they'll get a little bit more than a hangover. Uh, <laughs> but Gambit is still by her side and trying to get his skin touched. Uh, uh, because he's horny. They're horny. <laughs> what I say? They're horny all the time. They're my favorite couple. Gambit and Rogue is my favorite couple. Favorite X Men couple. Uh, Gene and Scott are too dramatic. They're they're the most known couple, but they're too dramatic, and they always have have a Wolverine by their side, basically. So I, I like Gat, Gambit really, and Rogue. You can't really they're put like, them as a couple because Wolverine is in there somehow. Yeah. So they're definitely a they're a thruple. Yeah, yeah, thruple. <laughs> yeah, Gambit is like Gambit. I, can I just say Gambit was is my favorite X Men character? Like yeah. on the original, like I don't know what it was about him, but like something, something about him draw me to him, and I was just like, maybe it's the accent. I don't know, but just watching the episode, I'm just like. He's like he's still my favorite, and then just seeing like in that scene itself when he's like, you know, I'm still here for you, like regardless of like of like regardless of what you're going through, regardless of the fact like you know you can't touch anybody, like I'm still here for you. Like I think it's so cute, and I mean, yeah, you guys can say like he's horny, like he wants them, but like there's that other side where it's like no matter what, like. To, in his mind, he's like, I'm here for you no matter what, yeah. you know, yeah. like, and I think that's so cute and romantic and that makes them a really cute couple. But I think so, too. I, th I think they're the, the, the best couple, in my opinion, when it comes until, to the next uh, until the next episode and we can talk about it. And well, we're going to talk about that. Don't worry. Uh, they hold it. <laughs> 
they hold hands while gl wearing gloves. We get morph. Meanwhile, is hanging out with beer drinking Wolverine, which may have been my my second favorite part of this whole nightclub scene because this scene right here explained to us from season one, episode one, why Wolver or episode two, when Morph dies, why Wolverine was the most upset. He punches Scott in the in the in the, in the stomach. He, he runs off. He he makes Scott's tr uh, car into a convertible. Runs off. He wants to kill all the Sentinels. He wants to. He's mad at everyone. Why? Because Morph, he said, was the only one that made him laugh. Was his best friend. And then we got a little bit of their relationship here as Morph is trying to, you know, find out why he was so upset at Scott. And then he turns into Gene and he starts talking shit. This is a friend conversation. This is how. Friend stuff. He's just take, giving him shit for, he says, uh, you know, uh, talking smack about Cyclops, how Gene's having a baby with the most boring man in the world, having to stick up his butt. But uh, but Wolverine gets real and he says, you know, it's because you're leaving. And he's like, I mean, Gene, he's leaving because she knows that this is no place for a, for a baby. And Morph is like surprised by this. Um, the FOH arrive, but the X-Men scare them off. Then we get Jubilee finally finds Roberto and he's dancing he's got some glow sticks and she wants to take him back but he asks her for a dance first and this popped me too because i was like oh jubilee doing a shit i was like oh let's go jubilee <laughs> jubilee my jubilee's one of my my low-key underrated dark horse favorites because she's kind of our intro into the animated series from the from the first series here but ness any thoughts on the whole nightclub scene here so the it it was kind of not gonna say kind of funny, but it was kind of funny watching um Morph and Wolverine have that conversation because you know Morph is just trying to get Wolverine to open up, but then Wolverine said some real shit, and that's that that never crossed Morph's mind. You no, know? nah. like, at the end of the and day, and we saw this we saw this later after when in the second episode with Storm, yeah. where Morph is always trying to be positive about stuff, yeah. always trying to make it a joke, and then some things just like go out of left field, just like. Gene and Scott potentially leaving. Like at the end of the day, yeah, we know they're mutants, but I love how like this series is going to show, or X Men just always shows that they're human, like their human side, mm -hmm. regardless of them having a mutant baby, which will have powers. It's still not going to be safe for them, regardless of they're going to be able to protect it. If even if it can protect itself, because you know it might come out advanced or whatever the case may be, but it's just still that like. I got to worry about my family. Like, I love you guys. You're my family as well. But this is something that is from me and the woman I love. So, like, we got to we gotta raise this, this child away from, you know, the hate that this, that the Mutant Academy gets, even though that, you know, since Charles's death, people have been more accepting of mutants. But there's still people like the Friends of Humanity. There's other entities out there that don't like mutants, don't care for them. So we have to separate ourselves. And, like, even with that in itself is a is a a fight because you're like, damn, I got to get away from the people that I love and and look at as a family, but also got to protect my family in the same instance. So it's like it was a lot going on, especially with Wolverine of all people just being like, all right, yeah, like it's this is the reason why things are, like I'm in a funk right now. And like yeah. I said, Morph didn't comprehend that until you know it hit him, and then later on in the in the in the episode that or episodes i should say that it hits even more so it it, it brings back to like that reality that like yeah at the end of the day they're humans with feelings just like even though they have superpowers and they can do whatever the fuck they want pretty much they still do have like somewhat of morals and a morale to that they mm -hmm. live by which makes them yeah. very, makes you more relatable yeah. yeah mutants have human emotions too and there yeah. you go <laughs> I love the bromance ship that Morph has with War uh, Wolverine. Like they have a really, like really, you know, it's like it's like bros. Like they're talking yeah. like they're bros and stuff like that. So and it's it's also kind of relates like in real life. Like when you have that best friend, you're out. Your best friend, you're like going through it, and like he's like he's like talking to you and like you know trying to like get you to open up or like with any best friend. You know, it's 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 very relatable. You know, and add on to what Ness was saying, it's like you know, how Wolverine is, like, upset, like, you know, how they're gonna leave, like, possibility that they're gonna leave, they're gonna move on. It's like... He's upset that Gene's leaving. 
Yeah, Jeezy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, he's like, Jeezy, but not Scott. He's like, oh, he's got whatever. I don't, you know, it's like, it's like in real life. It's like when you are, you know, when you're with like a, when you're with a group of people that you grew up, that you grow you grew up with, whatever, and then you meet somebody that you're in love with and you want, you know, you guys want to move, you guys want to go to a, the next chapter, right? And it's like, it's a tough conversation because like people in real life go through this because it's like, oh, like, you know, especially let's say someone gets a new job at another state, like they got to make that decision to like move, even though it's, it's a tough decision, it's, it's all relatable you know, in real life. Yeah. And that's basically what it shows on in the show as well. Absolutely. We got a couple of people giving us the history of Val Cooper here. Val B saying she ran uh, X Factor. She also ran X Force. Uh, she was a part, she was a government agent. He says, I mean, uh, the OG Val Cooper from the comments had a character of her own. So I'm not too sold on it, but her character was never in like, worked with the x-men really like it was always he was an x-force or x-factor had government government like licensed her own team of mutants to go to to sometimes even go against the x-men in the comic book so that's why i think i don't think this is the same val cooper that's why i think it's mystique main thing uh we got frantic world who says wolverine might have a chance to get the girl of his dreams um mm -hmm. Not necessarily, but I know what you mean. Uh, we got Scott, we got Scott Storm and Bishop visiting Guy Rich in prison. Guy Rich doesn't want to talk to them. He dismisses recent mutant sympathies as a fad. Uh, he says that the people only care because they're in vogue now. The most people know that if they, you make room for others, you have less rooms for yourself. Tolerance is extinction. Yo, this was a great villain monologue. I loved Guy Ridge in this. Guy Ridge gave me vibes of Joker in Dark Knight. Like, this is a great, or yeah, this was great stuff. A riddle, uh, Riddler in The Batman that came out recently. That was another one he reminded me of here. Uh, Ness, what did you think of uh, Guy Rich's little speech here talking to the mutants? And Tolerance is Extinction is actually our last, like, main saga of this season. That's the name of the final, I think, two or three episodes of the season one of X-Men 97. Which, it's always, like, it's, it's art imitating life. Because I, I, what I got from that is just like, you know, all the racist people or bigotry that's out there in the world are like, oh, we all can coexist together. But they're like, no, they're taking our jobs. They're taking over our neighborhood. This is straight like <laughs> MAGA, like make America great again. Yeah, like, no, like, <laughs> you, you know, at the end of the day, we all bleed the same blood. Like, it, it's, it's really not that deep, but people... There are some individuals out there that don't see it like that. And like as fucked up as the Mala was, like I, I respect it because he's coming from a place where he's like, all right, yeah, you guys might be okay now, but who knows? Because at the end of the day, there are good mutants, but there also are bad ones. Like there yeah. will we'll, we've seen throughout the X-Men uh history and then going forward we'll see more of the more like most likely but it's just like yeah there are good ones but he really shouldn't be making this type of statement for everyone because not all of them are bad you know like the x-men themselves very good people help the the world on 10 times over however many times it happens but it's just the fact that there's people out there that don't understand them they're scared it frightens them so the things where you don't understand, you want to like lash out or you don't know how to handle it properly. And he's one of them that don't know how to handle it properly. So his first reaction is to eradicate and erase them all. But hopefully um, he will never get down to that. I mean, he's already fucked up by doing it to the most, one of the most important ones in, in Xavier, but he got another thing coming. 
which he doesn't know yet, but he will by the end of this episode. <laughs> uh, Jets right next. Uh, since yeah. he's being unreasonable, Cyclops warns him. He says he gives he have one more chance, and he glows his eyes a little bit. I love that he has control, a little bit more control of his eyes than than he did during the animated series here. And he uh, he says that, uh, but no, but have you met my wife? Uh, he wasn't scared of Cyclops, but he says, have you met my wife? And Gene, using Cerebro enters Guy Rich's mind uh, to learn where he might have kept a second master mold. But something's wrong and Jean starts screaming. She says someone's here. Uh, she has a vision where she's in uniform and not pregnant in a desert. She runs to a crib to meet a crying baby, then looks down in her arms and finds that she's now holding her infant son. Now they're surrounded by graves and a master mold rises up from the ground and vaporizes them. Jean wakes up screaming and she tells the team where to go uh, to the Sahara Desert where they have a second master mold, uh, which is in control by Dr. Trask. But what did you think about Jean's vision here, Wendy? Um, I think it's just like a scene. I mean, not a scene. I, I think it's like, just watching it makes me think like they're probably going to introduce us to like another character in future in like later episodes cuz like somebody must have somebody must be messing with her we don't know who it is yeah, it's like I think that maybe someone has control of Guy Rich's mind and all I will say this is something that I also said in the animated series. There is a villain who has worked with the FOH in the past, and he's one of the most famous X-Men villains out there, and it's Apocalypse. So I wouldn't be surprised if if it's Apocalypse involved or even another uh, villain, but I'll talk more about him when we get to the second episode because like he's sister. more. Huh? Or like Sinister. I was gonna say Mr. Sinister, but he's more he's more prominent that we are definitely gonna see Mr. Sinister after the ending of episode two. Uh <laughs> We got uh yes all the all the all oh he said Vala B says all my references are in episode two we're still on episode one That's it's crazy one. yeah <laughs> later we see the team go to the Sierra Desert to track tra to track down Traz and the Master Mode uh their their banter uh in the plane is hilarious mm -hmm. with uh hit uh with psych uh, with uh Wolverine wanting to send the body the body of Traz in a in a body bag with pieces and then uh, Cyclops. He just wants the team to work together, and he's like, Bust, "Stop buzzing in my ear, bub!" Uh, and we get that little banter between them, but that is uh, immediately taken away as a sentinel interrupts them. Yeah, the the sentinel grabs their plane and starts to attack it. Uh, they beat its ass, and then uh, they they basically have this awesome. Escape the plane flying sequence where all the X Men that have flying powers, which is really only supposed to be Rogue and Storm, uh, because Rogue still has the powers of Miss Marvel. We they seen we also showed them they showed that in the animated series, I believe in season two, where she stole the powers of Miss Marvel and still has it, so she's able to fly. Storm is Mistress of the Elements, so she's able to fly. And then Morph, he's a shapeshifter, so he morphs into Archangel. He goes goes and saves Wolverine. Uh, we get Rogue, who gets uh, Beast and Bishop. And then I'm like, where's Storm go? Did like Storm forget that she might need to grab um, Cyclops? I was like, Cyclops is like falling, y'all. And then he's like, he beats up. He's like, oh, great, great team. We we escaped. That's, uh, I'll meet you on the ground. And I'm like, how do you get on the ground, though, homie? And this dude, just, he goes, he does the optic bus and does the greatest superhero landing we have ever seen. He only did that one other time. I believe this was in X-Men Evolution, not even the animated series, X-Men Evolution, where he gets like the upgrade uh, through a machine that uh, Magneto invented and he gets an upgrade and he does the blast along with Havoc, his brother, and they do the superhero landing like that, but never in the animated series. That shit was awesome. What did you think? about the whole plane landing sequence here, Wendy. Oh, it was 
took the words right out of my mouth. It was amazing. It was like, wow. You know, it's another thing, like you said, like he, you know, he has control of his powers a lot better, like uh, a lot better now. I thought it was dope. I was like, okay, all right, Cyclops, yes. Like, yes. Um, I was about to say, I just lost my thought. Um, I just thought it was a really great scene. Like that whole superhero landing, every, I thought it was great. I have no no complaints about it. Yeah, we get the, to me and my X-Men. Dude, oh yeah, my that God. Was that was fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like very, so dope. It was very, um, like Avengers, like you know, yes, very, very Avengers, like and like very Avengers, like. Thoughts. Absolutely, absolutely agree there, uh, Ness. Any notes on the airplane landing scene? No, nah, it was fire. Like every, <laughs> I, at first, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, okay, Jean. I'm not I'm sorry. Uh, Rogue, she can fly, so she'll get a couple of the guys. Storm can fly, she'll help out too, and then morph. He, mar he morphs into uh, Archangel. And then I'm just like, okay. So like, Scott's just falling. I was like, Scott don't want to be a dad. Man, oh, yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, why does he, so, he sound so calm? Like, you can't fly. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Next thing you know, he does the blast. And he's, I'm like, yo, that's fire. I'm like, wait a minute. What about all the people down there? Then I remember that they're in the desert and there's nobody around but Sam. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, no problem. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. No one's hurt. No one's hurt. Yeah, yeah. No, no one's you know, The last thing they need right now is a fucking innocent bystander getting killed. And, and that's, that, yeah, that that'll be it. That'll throw everything for a loop. All down, all downhill from there. <laughs> we, so they later find uh, Trash, who has uh, w who was warned by Guy Rich via friends on the prison staff. Uh, he attacks them with Sentinels, and we get the great sequence of the X Men versus Sentinel zombies. They're like coming out the fucking ground and shit. But I love how all of them had their moment, and they gave each of them their spotlight. Basically, you got Rogue just bodying fucking Sent. She did a diamond cutter. She did a fucking diamond cutter, y'all, on a Sentinel. She threw his head and did a diamond cutter to it. Yo, that shit was dope. Then you get Beast, who's doing who's doing lines from movies, says this is the start of a very nice and voluntary relationship. Gets into the Sentinel and starts getting into its heart. This is a nice change of heart as he rewires it and gets into it and starts attacking Sentinels. You got Bishop and Gambit teaming up together. Uh, they're fighting off the Sentinels. To get, uh, Bishop takes one of their blasts and then blasts it back at them and shit. Then uh, they get the big, they get the, all the Sentinels are kind of, you know, still getting up, still fighting. Fighting back against them, uh, they Wolverine comes at one with the with his claws and starts clawing it up and shit. But another one tosses him at Beast, and he flies through the the Sentinel. So we have a little face off between the rest of the zombie Sentinels and the X Men team until Scott says, "Give him the forecast," and then they hit the yo, they hit the piano. I was like, "Oh shit!" Storm pulls up. She looks so desert sand into fucking ice. And so she just uses all her powers to take the zombie sentinels into the now ice that's turned into glass and shatter all the zombie sentinels in one fell swoop. I was like, oh man, you're the yo. Y'all y'all have made Storm like the MVP of this episode already from her entrance. But if uh, that's a finale, oh my god. Like, see, because this and it's 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 not only the show them the forecast, it's when you you feel the breeze, you hear the sentinel say, Omega, Omega Threat Alert. I was like, oh shit. And Omega Threat me Omega level uh, mutant basically means that they are the highest level of that power and they have the most control over it. They're the best of the best at it. Like uh, Storm is an Omega level mutant. Magneto's an Omega level mutant. Charles Xavier is not even an Omega level uh, uh, mutant. So like this is like the, the best of the best. Apocalypse I believe is Omega level uh, mutant as well. But 
Man, and then finally, they take out the last, the Master Mole. The Master Mole that is always sitting down, always used to sit down, but they got new technology, and now Master Mole sat the fuck up, and it was like, oh, shit. But then they gave him the finale with Wolverine had to get the spotlight here as he they use everybody as a team. You get Gambit jumping on Wolverine's back, lighting up his claws with his energy, and then he gets the the, the uh, we get Morph turning into Blob, so he propels off a Blob into the Master Mode, cutting its head off, and Master Mode has to sit its fucking ass down. <laughs> Dead. West. Yo, that whole fighting sequence is the best fighting sequence I have ever seen in an animated series ever. No, ten out of ten. No, seven stars in the Tokyo Dome. That was the Tokyo Dome. The Sierra Desert of the Tokyo Dome. That is a seven star scene. Ness, what did you think about the Sierra Desert with X Men team versus the Zombie Sentinels? It just brought back how I felt about the series when i was a kid again i just felt like a big ass kid watching it um one of the 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 better things that i um noticed watching i don't remember if it was this episode or the next but with morph morphing into x-men members of the team that aren't like on the show as yeah right now, or like the past one from like he turned into colossus psylocke uh he just kept morphing into people archangel blob he yep. just kept morphing into people that are from like the og uh x-men team and i'm like yo you know for for people that don't know that's like that'll uh give them a, like go like who is he turning into you no know, well hopefully they can go out and do their history but for people like us that grew up with it they're like oh that's a nice callback that's a nice throwback i like it I, I love it and i appreciate it so outside of that like it was just great animation and a great fighting scene it was great overall i, I was marking out low key I, I i i'm glad i watched it when nobody was home because i would have made a lot of noise to them, which I did make a lot of noise. Watch, I, mean, I, I did make a, a, I made, I made a lot of noise. I did. I made a lot of noise. I sound like a little kid. My missus watching. is like, my missus is like, wrestling isn't even on yet. What are you watching? I watched it like in the afternoon last Wednesday. I was like, oh shit. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, this is great. This is dumb. Man. It was, it was so great. It, it was a great watch. It was a great watch. I had me. I feel like a kid again. And I'm just like, man, this is a, these are the days I have to worry about bills and going to work and shit like. Soon that. as you, kid. soon as you heard that music and they started fighting, I was like, oh, I'm a kid again. I'm six yeah. years old again. This is great. <laughs> yeah, put, put me right where I needed to be for this. Uh, any any uh, thoughts or comments on the Sierra Desert fight sequence, uh, Wendy? Honestly, like. You gotta put respect on Storm's name. Like she's that's how you, like she's like the baddest. Like you can't mess with her. Like you can't. The whole scene, the fighting scene, I love that. I love how they highlight every mutant's like fighting scene, like from like Storm, from Cyclops, from Gambit Morph. Like I it was great. It was so great. Like like Ness said, it just makes you like if like it's like you're a kid again. It's like you're sitting in front of the TV with a Capri Sun with lunchables and you're like watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is is happening. I I can't say like like you said, it's it's seven stars in the Tokyo Dome. This is what? <laughs> Kenny versus um uh Kenny versus um Okada like Wrestle yep. Kingdom like this was Wrestle like, Kingdom right here it was basically one of those like the fact that I watched it twice and then the second time I watched it with Josh and I made sure that Josh watched this and was just like put your phone down watch this like you need to watch this and he was just like I love this like he was just like oh I love it <laughs> and I was just like yes like. No words, no, no, no negatives. Like, and and I would say this is like a really good introduction, like really good episode, first episode, because it'll tell it is basically showing that there's gonna be more scenes like this in the upcoming. Yeah. So it, it makes you eager to like, I need to watch this. I can't wait for the next episode. I can't wait. Like they need to hurry up and put it on. Put it on the Disney Plus, like. I'm so eager, and that's the that's what I love about it. 
they built to that whole big big fight scene at the end like it was like a movie and they did it in like 20 something minutes like come on y'all like don't mess with this like it's different this show is different uh but yeah uh, we also got frantic world in the chat who says gene greg is a uh, gene gray is a omega level yes she is she's beyond uh omega like uh bala b says because she has the phoenix force inside of her uh we got bala b says storm is as strong as she is in the comics for the first time ever she's a straight up goddess in the comics broader line but beyond omega level and they showed that in the show yes i felt like i felt like everyone who was because a lot of people's kind of exposure to the X-Men are the movies, the Fox movies. And they did an absolute disservice to Rogue. They did a disservice to Cyclops. They did a disservice to Storm. And all three, I felt like, got redeemed very quickly within like two episodes of this series. If if you are someone that you never watched the animated series, you only watch the X-Men on the movies, and then you watch this, you're like, Oh shit, Rogue got all these powers. Rogue can do all this. She's not a sideline character who's always trying to lose her power. Oh, she can actually do some stuff. This is great. Oh, Sto- uh, Storm is not one-liners and bad one-liners at that. Uh, from Holly Berry, she actually is an Omega <laughs> level uh, mutant. And then Cyclops is an actual real leader who's a three-dimensional character who's not just an op. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's nice. Oh my gosh. Or, or a cuck. <laughs> An op or a cuck. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the two the two kind of characters that they gave him in the movies. Uh later we see Jubilee trying to uh talk to uh, uh Roberto into uh coming to the X-Men. Uh she talks about her beginning with the X-Men in the animated series, how the Sentinels came to get her and the X-Men saved her and she was an orphan but she found a family with them and Roberto feels bad because he can't tell his parents that they that he's a mutant uh be, and he says that if it must feel good to be in a place where you're accepted and he feels like he's lying to them because of that and he doesn't want to be an X-Men he doesn't even want to be himself right now uh he shows off his power uh showing his arm glowing so he he sees a little bit but he could completely turn into it i i believe i think he just needs uh sunlight and he could completely turn into like that what he did with his arm uh they flirt a little bit and sunspot hands her his business card before leaving i think we're gonna see more of these two together but what did you think about sunspot's little appearance here in episode one wendy um it was a really well because what did i think about it i was just like Cause at first I didn't know if he, cause in the beginning I I thought he was like basically bullshitting, like to pretend like he was a mutant, but not really, or whatever. Like, and he, you know, and and people probably thought he was a mutant. So I didn't know what was his power really. So then when they when he finally like shows it to Jubilee, I'm like, oh, okay. So oh, so you you do energy, you just do sunspots or whatever. I was like, okay, that's cool. I I definitely feel like we will definitely see more of him, especially the whole interaction between him and Jubilee. How like they they relate to each other and the little flirting. I'm like, okay, this could be a new couple coming up, new couple because new everybody's think, shipping them. Everybody's yeah, shipping them now because I, I don't think like I think. There wasn't no, was it? I think she was like basically single in the original, so like there wasn't really anybody that she flirted really with. Uh, long shot that's the only one, okay? Yeah, so like long shot, was- and she had a crush on Iceman. Oh, well, that's a given, but <laughs> I don't think like, uh, but yeah, so like it's really cute that they try, like, people ship them together. So I will definitely see more of Sunspot or Roberto. Yes. Uh, finally, we get Cyclops and Jean. They're ready to announce to the team that they're leaving, but they get an alert of an intruder in the X Mansion, and we see that it is Magneto. And basically, they gave this away in the trailer, though. Uh, who's entered Xavier's office, and he is reading the the will and testament. And according to the will, Xavier has left everything he knows to. Magneto. And that is how the show, the the episode one ends. I thought it was a fantastic 
episode one. I would say out of 10, you give it a nine out of 10. What about y'all? Yeah, I'll give it a nine out of 10. I want to give it a 10 out of 10 just because of nostalgia and me and just markness intensifies. Because you know what? I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because I can't really think says anything bad to say about it, honestly. Like I know a nine is good for room and improvement, but I'm I'm go balls to the wall. I'm gonna give it a 10, 10 out of 10. <laughs> what about you, Wendy? Oh, okay. So I I'm gonna give it nine and a half stars. Right in the nine middle. Nine and a half, almost, almost 10. I I it was a great introduction. The intro, the fight scenes, the characters, like there's really not much complaint to say, you know, it just made, like I said, made me eager to see the next episode. Like, and that ending was a really good, like cliffhanger. Like, wait, huh? Like, wait, wait, how? Yeah, that, that's why, that's why I'm like, um, that's why I gave it a nine out of 10. Cause I'm docking mm -hmm. a point because they gave away that scene in the trailer. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I was like, I, was like, I would have, I would have loved for that, for me to actually be surprised yeah. by yeah. that, by that ending of the episode yeah. one. But I was like, Oh, I know it's going to end with yeah. Magneto showing up. Like as soon as we, I saw them on the basketball court, I was like, okay, how are they going to get alerted that Magneto is in the office? Cause I know yeah. that's how it ends. <laughs> yeah. So that's why a nine out of ten seems yeah. right for me. Mm -hmm. Uh we got in the chat here. We we got uh chilling with Chase who says Cyclops gets the worst treatment in the movies. X-Men 97 for sure, making Cyclops one of the best characters. Uh Frantic World mentions that Sunspot was in Days of Future Past movie, so that is also true. Uh so yes, Sunspot was in New Mutants as well. So yeah, a couple couple of uh, instances we've seen Sunspot in the in the past, but Finish off on episode one. Who is your MVP, Wendy? Storm. Ness? I want to say Storm, too, but I it's either Storm or Cyclops, and I kind of want to... I don't want to give it to them both, but <laughs> for... Uh, a variety of choices. I'll go with Cyclops then, since since Wendy picked Storm. So I'll be the tiebreaker here, and I'll finish it at a tie. Co MVP Storm and Cyclops. That works. Right? That, works. <laughs> that, works. that works. That works. Co MVP because both of them were redeemed in episode one. LVP. Um. LVP is uh, whoever made the trailer for me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever made the trailer, that's the LVP. Any LVPs for y'all? Oh, the Friends of Humanity. So yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, okay. If I'm gonna be real, I was gonna say um, LV LVP is the Sentinels. Sentinels stay yeah. getting yeah. getting trash. They yeah. are trash. They stay getting th throttled by the X Men. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah must, I would say yeah. It must suck to spend all that money on these things for them to always get fucking annihilated and destroyed episode Every after episode. <laughs> Every single time. It does not matter. Uh so we go to episode 2 where we see a fire uh man woman uh is saving a kid who's trapped on a broken uh broken down Ferris wheel the wheel collapses but we then see Magneto holds it together and saves them Magneto the hero the news reporter catches all of this and is in shock at home, Scott watches the news and wonders if Xavier didn't trust him enough to lead the team. Gene suggests that bringing in Magneto was Xavier's way of giving them a break and a way to get out of the X-Men. The Friends of Humanity are rounding up the Morlocks in the sewers, and Magneto shows up to beat the Friends of Humanity's asses. One lady wants to sass him and be a Karen. He puts the metal on her mouth. He says, oh, and he doesn't even kill them. He just keeps them trapped. He then later arranges for the for the Morlocks to take refuge on the mutant nation of Genosha. And then he comes up at the X Mansion. Everybody's talking. We get a uh, Beast with a nice little Mark Twain quote. You got a got a note of Beast is always getting in his quotes. Always getting in his famous quotes. 
uh bishop notes that he magneto leading the x-men is something that he's he hasn't seen in any of the futures that he's gone through so a note of uh there of bishop being a time traveler and then uh magneto comes in and he talks trash about the, the uh the morlocks going to genosha saying that he's surprised with xavier's vast wealth that you that him nor the x-men thought to guide the mutants to the the mutant island of genosha and where they can be safe because an i an island nation of mutants is like, like a great idea right you know you know it's not nothing can happen there right nothing like anything's happened in this series like my needle didn't have to blow one up or anything oh, like that yeah, right? <laughs> um uh, still, Cyclops doesn't trust uh, Magneto, despite him clearly being in the right. Storm uh, takes a more measured approach, saying that it's only natural for them to want Magneto to prove his sincerity in helping them. And Magneto proceeds to gas up Storm, saying that she is a goddess in every way. So I am going to demand your trust. Uh, he agrees to, but he eventually agrees to uh, prove himself to them. What did you think about this whole little meeting with the X-Men and Magneto here to start off episode two? Wendy? Well, first, the fact that he saved the kid and a firefighter in Coney Island. That I was like, wait. I was like, yeah. New York? I was like... I was, well, first, that don't even look like Wonder Wheel, so, but, okay. Um, it's just seeing Magneto, and it's like, I could understand why they were very hesitant to, like, trust him, because it's like, dude, like, you were trying to destroy us, like, <laughs> that like years ago, you're trying to kill us, destroy us, and then all of a sudden, you're like, miss, like, you turn into a new leaf, and was just like, you know, I want to like I want to save the mutants. I'm, you know, I'm I'm trying to be good, and it's like, like, what's your real agenda? You know, and that's basically what they had in their mind. It's like, what's your real agenda, bro? Um, and it's and honestly, seeing that monologue of like what he was saying about you know Xavier, he has all this money. Like he could have used this money for good. Like it kind of. Kind of, he's kind of made it seem like Xavier was like more like not the bad or the bad guy or like the villain, but it's like you know you see like you can honestly like think about it and be like hmm, like okay, like kind of think about it and you're like wait a minute, like something about what he's saying is kind of truthful, like because he's not yeah. helping. It's like it's it's the it's the it's the Batman theory. Batman yeah. Bruce Wayne could do a lot more help for Gotham City if he used right. his vast wealth than fighting criminals <laughs> on the street. Right. Charles Xavier could help out mutant kind a whole lot more using his money instead of having the X Men go out there to fight everybody that is against mutants. Yeah, so it's like it, it makes you think like, hmm, okay, wait, this man is actually speaking some sense right now. So it just makes you think. And then also like that the um the conflict with, with Scott, like thinking like damn, like, did he really not trust me? Like, I don't understand. Like, why would he like he's like question in a way kind of questioning Xavier, like, okay, what was your yeah. thought process in that? And 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 Magneto mentions that at the end. He was like, Oh, so you have finally realized what I've realized long ago that Charles Xavier can also be wrong. <laughs> like he's not perfect, like he's not holier than you know, like he's not an angel. Everyone can make mistakes, even him can make a mistake. Yeah. And I like I like that uh, Jean turned down reading his mind because she said she was like, I can only know his attentions for right now. I can't know it every minute at every time. And then Cyclops went into his op mode when he becomes a fucking cop on the street. And he's like, we're going to read it every day then. That's why uh, I was like, you fucking op. You fucking op. I was like, I was knew there was something I like about you. You're a fucking op. It's like what type of what type of invading of privacy is that? Uh, and this was also the scene where uh, Rogue says that you know Eric has his past, but so do all of us. So maybe we should give him a chance. And Magneto makes the face because she called him Eric. So. Mm -hmm. 
So as uh, we see, we see uh, Gene and Storm are packing up. We get a scene where Gene and Storm talk on Gene's bed. Later, uh, they talk about basically, you know, uh, Gene having some doubts now that Magneto's here. She fears that uh, Scott won't won't be able to leave and you know be you know take their baby away and then uh basically storm talks about you know being away from the team or having you know talking about her baby being you know mutant and gene wanting the baby to be human and not have the powers and is that bad and storm talked about how she once dreamed about not having her powers but she realized that having her powers is the reason that she was able to meet the family that she has now with the x-men and leave in this mansion and uh, have a sister like gene and she says she couldn't imagine not having her powers or not having the x-men by her side and then we get later rogue comes to talk to magneto very interesting interesting uh magneto just can't quit uh xavier no matter how wrong he was uh he's looking at his helmet kind of reminiscing about the past and then rogue acts about the helmet uh he says that he used to wear it to keep him out of his uh mind but he said but she but he kind of admits that it was also to keep the love that Xavier had out of his head and knowing that there was someone out there that uh, loved him as much as Xavier did. And he needs to honor Xavier's wishes. Rogue sympathizes with Magneto as she was also a former villain that was taken in by the X-Men. And she thinks Magneto can earn their trust through his actions. Magneto starts uh, filling up her hand a bit and getting close, but she stops him uh, for from degloving her. He acts as if uh, they know about about her their past together and rogue says uh no and that cat's not getting uh, gonna stay in its bag so this is a i think a reference to age of apocalypse in the comics where magneto and and uh rogue uh were basically were together in an alternate present and they had a baby together because Magneto was able to basically use his power to counteract uh, Rogue's power. And he was able to slip through a magnetic field and slip some semen uh, into uh, Rogue. And they had a baby. <laughs> Magneto, yo, Magneto be, be busting in a lot of joint dawns, yo. When they connect, when they connect X Men to the to the MCU, and yo, he got mad illegitimate kids up in here. Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, like what we doing? Yeah, Just yeah, saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ness, oh what? Uh, first, let's start with Wendy. What did you think about the little scene with Jean and uh, Storm talking in Jean's room? I thought it was, you know. I thought it was really sweet. I thought it was really nice, like for them to having a conversation. And like, you know, of course, obviously, like, I'm not surprised that she was having doubts about it. She was having doubts once Magneto got there. And, you know, Storm being the the re you know, giving her advice and just telling her, like, you know, if it wasn't for these, just like, I guess, like just letting her know, like, if it wasn't for these powers, I would have never had met you guys. You know, if it wasn't you know, and, and she doesn't regret like having these powers, which, you know, I guess she's like, just giving her uh like a heads up, like, you know, just think about it. Like, you know, if it, if it wasn't the fact that if you didn't have these powers, you would have never have met Xavier. You would have never had met Scott. You would have never had met the love of your life. You wouldn't, you know, you would have never have had this family. So just, you know, think about that. Um, yeah, I also like how she showed like her her suit from the Phoenix. How like yes. oh like she had it out in the mirror, you know. It's a really and she good, referenced like, that she was like yeah, she hasn't wore it to, since the fight on the blue side of the moon. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Like they showed they showed that. Um, but yeah, from that to that other scene, I'm like, um, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> um. Rogue, um, <laughs> what what's going on here? I'm like, what's going on? What you have, like, what you had a pass with Magneto? She was a part of the Brotherhood that's been established in the animated series. Uh, 
Ness, what did you think about the Magneto and Rogue uh, scene here? Oh, I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for <laughs> well, this. I'm waiting. <laughs> well, okay. now after hearing this and being reminded that she was of the Brotherhood, I completely forgot about that. It's been so long since I I had that information. Um, but my rant that it was going to be before that was told to me <laughs> was, what the fuck are you doing, Rogue? What do you mean you can't tell these people? First of all, I completely forgot that that was even, I or not even forgot. Well, yeah, I did forget. But at the time, I didn't remember that I knew that she was a part of it. So yeah. for them, to, for him to, first of all, it was just weird out of nowhere that he was just trying to like, seduce her and he's touching her hand and i'm like oh whoa, 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 hold the fuck on that what you <laughs> what's doing? going on here <laughs> i'm like what's yeah he's like oh do they know about us i'm like no about what no no about who and she's like no that's something that they can't they don't need to know and i'm like oh so if they don't know let me my boy gambit don't know <laughs> you try to two-time my man gambit he out here, he's out here ready to risk his life to touch your cheek to touch your hand. <laughs> to grab them cheeks. <laughs> he will sacrifice his life for a kiss. And you out here throwing it, throwing it back on Magneto. And then you don't even want to be honest enough with him to let him know that it, you know, all right, everybody has a past. It doesn't matter. And then Gambit worships the ground that Rogue walks on. I highly doubt that he would be upset to the point that he don't want to deal with her, can't forgive her, anything of that nature. So not only is this show not really for kids, it just goes to show that even mutants have a have a secret side that they don't want to tell. Everybody. Like if we get them that mutants have a secret side or superheroes in general, they have yeah. the superhero side and then they have their secret identity. When you're a part of a team of other individuals that you know who, what their secret identity and know that, you know, they've gone through some things that will pretty much traumatize them and things of that nature usually are open and honest about that. So you guys can all be on one accord. All can, you know, be there for each other. Oh no, not rogue. She wanted to keep that little tidbit for herself. So nobody can understand that. So I'm just like, wow, I thought I knew you. I have no <laughs> idea who you are. That just, oh man. And then Magneto, he's just like, <laughs> He don't give a fuck about none of that shit. He's just trying to get some more. I'm like, oh man, this guy. First he goes from being the op. Now he's their leader. Now he's trying to use being the leader to, to pass off sexual advances. And I'm like, oh, this motherfucker here. It's, it's, I mean, as disgusted as I was, I couldn't turn away. I was enjoying what was going on because I'm like, oh, there's more uh, to, to, to the story it makes it more for adults. So now I can really yeah. enjoy this 20 years later as an adult. X X so, Men is a horny soap opera. Yeah. That's very, what it is. Yeah, very, very much so. But I'm just like, damn it, damn it, rogue. I thought you were one of the good ones, which you still are, but I'm trying to get I'm just I'm just in my feelings at the moment for my guy Gambit, which as of right now, he doesn't know. But down the line, he's gonna find out. It's gonna. It's he's there. gonna it's find bad. out. Poor guy. Out. Unfortunately, fail for him. Luckily, uh, this plot point uh, is is stop right there with the whole Magneto and uh, Rogue as helicopters arrive at the X Mansion. It is Val and her gang of of dudes armed with anti Magneto guns, plastic guns, but they stupidly. <laughs> they stupidly came with big ass helicopters, so they wanted to bring him in. Unfortunately, their big ass helicopters get turned in, uh, turned against them because they're made of metal. Duh. Uh, Magneto's willing to use them against them, but Val still wants to place him under arrest for his past crimes and have him face trial. In order to earn everyone's trust, Magneto agrees to the arrest and the trial. We get a little stare between him and Rogue as he's taken in. Uh, people are protesting in front of the UN. And I, I love the scene with him turning the helicopters against uh, the, the Val and her gang because it felt like a callback to the first X-Men movie when he turned yeah. the guns against everybody when they had the, the stare down, the first Fox movie. That was great. 
Uh, but yeah, people are protesting in front of the UN, hating on mutants and Magneto. The Friends of Humanity are there to steer the pot, while one is readying a gun. Uh, that is the Executioner. At the United Nations, uh, the trial of Magneto begins. We get Magneto with the actually comic book accurate uh, getup from that from that uh, the comic book uh, that they did the trial of Magneto in. Magneto's immediately playing the Holocaust card. He says, hey, "I once was crucified by my for for my people," and then he says that the people are are always hating, and even the oppressed can become oppressors. Xavier knew this and believe that they can change the way things are and instead have them all live in harmony and for mutants and humans to coexist i love that was twice in this episode this man has complete disgust in coexisting with humans <laughs> he says that a un person says is all uh uh, well, that's nice, but what about all the people you hurt? And Magneto is all, well, what about all the mutants people hurt? A UN lady uh, questions if Magneto is really willing to walk Xavier's pass, uh, path. Protesters uh, breach the perimeter, and they uh, they want to get at Magneto with their guns and their arms, uh, and the judges as well. They're given notice that the, they want the judges as well, and Magneto has to get in a quick little sarcastic quip of, you give me a frail trial, and now they want to hold it against you. My oh my, how how that works. <laughs> Isn't it ironic? <laughs> Yo, Magneto is just the ultimate, ultimate sarcastic bastard. I love it in every way. What did y'all think about Magneto's little monologue that he did during the trial and everything leading up until the protesters came in? Well, just like I said earlier, there's there's bad mutants and there's good mutants. For all the good that some mutants did, there were bad ones out there. Just like there's good normal humans and there's bad normal humans. And of course, American society doesn't want to remember that they've had fucking bad Americans that did shit to a whole lot of people or just in the world in general. So it's, it, it was uh, a taste of their own medicine for Magneto to say that. But for him to even go out of his way to show up to this trial, to not fucking kill them, before even accepting to even want to do this or even getting there and making it a yeah 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 he was yeah. <laughs> he's, hey, he's an animal at heart so you know they he gets he's probably in heat when he was looking at the picture he's a horny um, animal yeah very <laughs> but yeah so I'm um I I gotta I gotta give Magneto his props he he's handling things um in a Charles like way even though that it's not his way and he's doing it to honor his friend. And at the end of the day, you got to respect that, that he's even trying to do things that aren't um, to his standards and his liking. But he made a promise to his dear friend. And he as so far, he's upholding his end of the bargain. Uh, Wendy, what did you think? Uh, I, I mean, I'm agree everything that you guys are saying, you know. That monologue was really great. I know, like, in a way, it's like, you know, yeah, they were questioning him. Like, they were really questioning him. Like, you can honestly tell, like, he doesn't really want to coexist with humans. No. But, like, he's just, you know, like Ness said, he's doing it to honor his friend. And, you know, even though it's not his way, like, he's trying to, I guess, make things right, whether he likes it or not. Did y'all see that look that Rogue gave him? Like, come on. Like, girl, stop making it obvious. She, she, she's worried. She's just worried for her. Stop making it obvious, girl. Oh, my stop. Like, stop. Like, come on. And then, like, you notice, like, when they were all sitting, like, you saw, like, Gambit's reaction as well. Yeah. I'm like, he knows. He ain't stupid. I was like, he he has a sense. Like, he knows. It's a poor Gambit. Gambit. Um, but yeah, I uh it was giving very I don't want to say it because well Ness brought it up earlier, but like very January 6th. 
<laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah. Them, them, them breaking the perimeter. Yes, that was one hundred percent January's. They went for it. They went for it. Episode two. They was like, "Nah, we're not. We're sick of making illusions. We're gonna have a full on January six insurrection on yes. episode two. That's ridiculous. That was crazy. That and was that crazy. Like another way of them bringing real life stories to to the animated show. Like they're bringing up real stuff, and it's like. It's just a show. It's like it's not just a kid's show. Like you know, no. it's the kids, and also something that kids can learn too. Like they, it's like it's like in a way educational. You know, like them telling you, like, okay, you have this man going on trial for his past crime, and then all you, and then you see these protesters that they are so against mutants, and it's it's so real life. You know, and Absolutely. and and that's the thing that I love about it. Like I love. You know, I, I love everything about it. I, it was great. Uh, meanwhile, while that's going down, we got Wolverine is at home with pregnant Jean. Uh, they're watching the trial. Wolverine says they are going through everything that uh, Magneto has done from here to Asteroid M. Asteroid M was the uh, the mutant planet that Magneto invented in the animated series. And... Um, <laughs> Gene is surprised that Scott is at the trial. She didn't know he was going to go there. And uh, Wolverine says, well, there's a lot of that not telling people stuff going around, mm -hmm. kind of making a, a snide comment about her deciding to leave behind his back. Uh, Logan then wants to get involved when they uh, do the insurrection. But Jean has to make it all about herself. And because she's going into labor, and I love, I love when she says he's he's here. It gives us the funniest moment of either of the first episodes as Wolverine puts out his claws and says, "Who Cyclops? I mean, no, who Apocalypse? Apocalypse? I was like, yeah, this is he said, who Apocalypse? It's like, no, the baby. And then she tosses the keys. She uses her powers to toss the keys and his jacket to him. Who? Apocalypse? Great line. Great timing. Everything was great about it. At the words was like, oh, like this is like for real. Like, oh, shit, she's having this baby. Holy crap. But my question is like, why? Like, who made the decision for Logan to stay with Jean? Who? Who made that choice? Like there had oh, to be a better. There had to be a better choice than Logan like, to who be made there. That choice. Yeah, of all people, because <laughs> as you would think, I, I don't even know if it works that way. But this man has a super duper heightened sense of smell. You would think that maybe it works like that that he smell a water break in or something of that nature no nope. he was just no it's, no he was no. like he was like he basically was like c-section <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's what that's what oh, logan was man. thinking he oh, was thinking c-section no, no anesthesia <laughs> no anesthesia here we go. Oh, uh, they they jump into Logan's car. They're right, almost. They're riding. They're 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 riding the car on the on the sidewalk at certain points, driving like 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 they're mad going to the hospital. Uh, Jean has to use her powers to save people's lives because Logan's driving so fast. Uh, the protesters back at the courthouse are still on their attack. Cyclops blasts the ground in order to lift up the ground and create a wall of material to block them, which I was like, this is fucking great. It's fucking great. Uh, the executioner, one of the, the friends of humanity, shows up to cause trouble. He kicks uh, their, their asses with some lasers, even collars up uh, Bishop so he can't absorb his energy blast and blasts him with the gun. Uh, G uh, then we have him completely fucking up Cyclops. He takes his visor off, so Cyclops has to close his eyes so he doesn't take out the whole courthouse, and he starts bashing him in the face with the Sentinel tech, giving us the most racist fucking speech ever. It was like, all you mutants want to make it about yourself. Don't you think us humans go through hard stuff? All lives matter. Basically, that was the speech. Yeah. I was like, yo, 
I am I am so angry at this person right now because that speech felt too real. It felt too real for me. And then him saying like how Mewen's like complaining, like they like he hates when they're complaining, like like and that was one of the things that he said that he hates about mutants. Yeah, yeah like what Valby was saying. <laughs> it's whining. He was whining. Oh my All God. lives matter. Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> a, a, it definitely was a speech because, like, I'm not even gonna lie. Mutant, you could have you could have replaced mutant with any ethnicity <laughs> in that instance, and that, that's definitely how it felt. I'm like, damn, I know it's the cartoon talking about you know superheroes, but this is very January six X. Like, I feel like it's the Civil War. Right? I'm, I'm in the mm-hmm. South, and they they think they're about to get one up on us, and I'm just like, oh man, this is this is too real. This is way too real. Facts. Uh, at this point, uh, Jean telepathically sends the message to Scott that she's in labor. So Storm, he lets Storm know that Jean's in labor. So Storm starts being a straight up boss. He becomes the leader. She says, "Rogue, go fly Cyclops out of the fight to go watch his baby uh, pop out her baby, uh, pop out the ba- uh, pop out the thing, whatever. This wife pop out the baby. Uh, then she basically tells the entire UN. She was like, Fr- "Shut the fuck up and free Magneto," and they do that shit. Uh, so he can, so they can save everyone. They, they basically put up a field, a me, a, like electricity field with Magneto using the metal and Storm using her her ability with the elements. Jean is denied at the hospital because she is a mutant and her dangerous powers can go out of control. I love that part too. I was like, yes, this is what black people and minorities and uh, Hispanics, yeah. all Indians, they've all gone through this. This is. Uh, the doctor is dropping some not so uh, subliminal uh, prejudice about the mutants too. Uh, Cyclops wants Rogue to steal the doctor's abilities, of, uh, his medical abilities, and deliver the baby herself. She is worried about accidentally touching the baby and is and, uh, and aborting it. But Jean and Cyclops say that they trust her, so she says, "Yeah, all right, that's all I needed to know. Touch him." Yeah. And then she's like, "Give me CVVs, give me all it is." I was like, "Yo." I love that. I love that that now is the thing that, yes, Rogue's abilities can not only get mutant abilities, but also human intelligence. That's awesome. They they made Rogue better than what she was in the the movies, 100%. I was like, why couldn't we use her like that in the movies? Yeah, she was always like a fucking damsel in distress, and she's a fucking mutant herself. Like she was just always had to wait for somebody to save her. I always, I always hated that. Oh man! I, now I'm just sitting here thinking about that. She used to piss me off so much. Also, she had that accent. Where was that? Yes. Uh, Where was it? Yeah. The yeah. southern accent. It brings it all together. It brings it all together. Uh, at the UN, uh, Magneto creates a cage with the magnetic uh, energy and metals protecting innocent people from the friends of humanity. Executioner freaking pulls up, sneaks up. He aims at Magneto. He takes a while. He's like gearing up, aiming at Magneto. And Magneto apparently doesn't see it. Storm sees the, the, the blast is coming and she sacrifices herself. For Magneto stepping in front of it. She takes on the blast. In a rage, Magneto grabs up the executioner, pins him against uh, one of the, the metal things, the, the emblem on the wall. He then takes all of the judges. He removes them from the court. He looks to Storm in, his, in her horror, where she realizes that she has lost her power. Is basically the thing, the... Um, the, the necklace that they put on the mutants to suppress their powers. It's like a full-on blast that makes them lose it for a longer time, even maybe permanently. And she gets hit with it. That moment where she's like, I can't feel the out. Oh my God. That was yeah. like, oh, Jesus. Magneto turns on the UN Council, who say that they didn't want this. He points to a crying depowered storm and says that this was their dream. The X-Men do so much for humanity, and this is their reward for taking the high road. And he says that if this is the high road, then I say something that I have said many times before. Never again. 
And he just rips them up into the sky, takes them in a meta in his power field, lifts the podium, taking him uh, and the executioner, the judges, and storm into space. He says that in the past he would have obliterated their asses, but he is he is uh, doing this in honor of Xavier. He says that he wants to be uh, you know good for them. He has them uh, look down on Earth and see how small it is. We see uh, flashes of Jean having her baby. Uh, listen, we get a feel good uh, speech about uh, Charles's dream and says he'll try to be a good guy. So please don't let me let you down. And, and he brings them back down to earth at the hospital. Jean successfully gives birth to the baby, which they name Nathan, Nathan Charles Summers, which was confirmation for me. And I was like, yes, it's happening. It's happening. That is fucking cable. Yes. Let's go. Uh, Logan watches as uh, Gene and Scott make out because he's a cuck. Uh, but what did you think about Storm being depowered? What did you think about Magneto's speech afterwards, as well as uh, the, uh, you know, the, the birth of Nathan Summers, a.k.a. Gable? Uh, do y'all want my theory now or do y'all want it after y'all share y'all? No, I like to hear it now, honestly. Yeah, I want to. My it. theory is this was all set up by Magneto. Mm. How did he not see Executioner aiming at him? How did he not see it? Like, I think that Magneto knew one of the X Men would step in front for him and do the and be the sacrificial lamb. And he wanted to make a point so he can gain the trust of the X-Men and do what he really wants to do, which we'll eventually find out. I'm here for it. See how that plays out. I like it. I like it. I, I don't think Magneto is a good guy who's trying to reform. I just yeah. don't. The way he says humans and mutants coexist. I'm I'm not convinced. I mean, you have a good theory because of everything that literally happens in this episode. Mm -hmm. So as even though he's trying to do his part from, you know, on the surface, people are going to be assholes and treat mutants the way they're going to want to treat them regardless. And he knows that in the back of his mind, which, all, like you said, although he is trying on the surface, he's like, no, I don't fucking trust these people. And I got a little contingency plan in my back pocket in case I need to, you know, do something to get my will on all this and you know i could just push charles's wants to the side because you know once that's out of the way he's dead i can do whatever the fuck i want but i i, I like that theory i want to see where it goes but what did you think about the scene with everything that went down storm being depowered magneto speech and nathan summer's birth all right, well, just for the storm, I fucking hated the storm shit. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Going from the first episode of Omega Threat level level Omega level threat detected to you ain't a threat at all now. Like what the fuck? Um, I'm hoping at some point. Um, well, I like to think at some point she gets her powers back. Um, how that happens, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, man, it's just. And it was just so sad because even after that, she gets on the bus and they're like, you got this feeling like she's not coming back. Like they're anyone that everybody was like um, worrying about Scott and Jean leaving and then fucking out of nowhere, this shit happens to Storm. And then uh, she's like, well, now I got to go live my life like a regular fucking like a regular human. I can't even be with the X-Men anymore because I don't have any powers. And I'm just like, damn, you know, you just went from pretty much being one of the, one of the most powerful mutants in the series to now you're just a normal individual like that shit sucks and like i know it's gonna the to see what happens to the team over time because you know that's going to be something that straight wolverine's probably going to blame scott and he wasn't even fucking there uh he's definitely they're definitely not going to pretty much probably trust uh magneto because she tried to save him even though uh, if he knew it was coming, or if he didn't know it was coming, it still happened. And well, it, Gambit so already said that he was like the blaster yeah. was supposed to be for you. For you, yeah. So like they're already going to be pointing the fingers at at him, even though Storm took it upon herself to sa sacrifice herself for Magneto. You know, like it's it's a lot going on. It's going to be a lot, and I'm I'm here for whatever happens. But yeah, man, it just sucks that it had to be her. Could have it could have been 
who knows? It could have been a less known fucking some. Yeah, you know, it could have been anybody else other than Storm. No, I don't want to say that. Let me take that back. It could have been nobody. I didn't want it to be anybody, but I definitely didn't want it to be Storm. It just, uh, it just broke my heart. Wendy, I know you're a big Storm fan. So how did it feel seeing Storm go down like that? Why you gotta be hurt? Like, first of all, you're not. And honestly, I was thinking about the same thing that you were saying, Sid. Like that you was thinking, how the hell you did not see that man about to shoot you? You with a metal to- gun. Exactly. With a metal gun. Exactly. I'm like, how the hell you did not see that, sir? Like you wanted it to happen. That's why I said it. It kind of shows that he has a hidden agenda, and he's pretending to be a good guy. But we all know behind that facade. We know you have another plan. So stop with the BS. Like stop pretending, sir. Like stop pretending. Like seriously, when when she's like when she jumped in to protect him, I'm like, girl. What? Why would you protect this man? Like, no, it made me sad. I love Storm. She's a badass. I love it, especially seeing her like in this new, like seeing her in the new series in this show. I'm like, oh, I even like her even more. Like, she's like, I, I, I love her even more. I'm like, why I gotta be her? Like, why? It, it just upsets me. And the fact, like, you're saying, like, I like. Magneto probably wanted this. He wanted this to happen. And I'm like, I believe that. Sir, you wanted this to happen. And it so saddens me to see like Storm ends up leaving, like trying to f- like find out her, um, like figure out who she is. Like she, yeah. had, like who she is without powers. She has to find herself. Who you know is saying? who is Aura without yes, Storm? Exactly. Like who is she without her powers? It's so sad. I can't wait for the next episode. But god damn it, Magneto. What the hell? Bro, like I'm just uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just not convinced, y'all. I'm just not convinced. I'm not convinced Magneto is on side on this one here. Love Magneto's speech uh afterwards, basically talking down to the humans for what they did. Like you persevere us, but it just felt like such a prepared speech. Like he knew everything was gonna happen. <laughs> like, like <laughs> that's why. That's another reason why I was like. Yeah, I don't believe you. I think you had something to do with this, sir. <laughs> now I do. I definitely do. After hearing that speech, uh, so so Magneto is pardoned after this. Uh, Scott is still unsure, but he's willing to trust Xavier on the Magneto issue. He even gives Magneto some dark roast, even though uh, Magneto thought it was poison. They have a little moment uh, <laughs> where May, uh, where Scott Scott says that him and Jean are going to leave. Uh, they won't leave just yet, since, uh, since it seems that we're going to be losing another X-Men, as y'all said, Aurora, after hearing the news from Beast uh, that uh, it is it could be permanent. He still needs to do more diagnosis. I love when he says diagnosis. Uh, I need to do more diagnosis, and uh, but he says that it could be permanent. So she gets startled by the, the, the lightning for the first time in her life since she got her powers. So she decides to leave. She leaves this emotional, heartbreaking speech where she, like, tells she leaves the letter for Jean, her sister, and uh, tells her that she has said goodbye to the team many times before, so she could be the one to let them know. Uh, she leaves that note for Jean, and Jean reads it to the rest of the team. She's crying while she does it. Uh, Jean and Scott don't have to hold back their life for her sake, she says in the note. And, oh man, it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking. And we see, you know, some of the other X-Men who are, you know, after he, uh, hearing the note or reading the note, they are like all like upset. We see a moment where uh, Wolverine is upset in a tree and they get the bags getting thrown. He gets potato chips thrown at him by Morph and Morph has some beers and he transforms into Sabretooth to get his, get his friend's uh, eye. And I love that. I was like, oh, he's going to wrestle with them. Oh, that's nice. Uh, make Wolverine feel better. Uh, we, then we get the little moment with Magneto and Rogue, where Rogue comes to see Magneto, and they have unprotected hand holding. Unprotected. 
unprotected. They took off the protection and they were holding hands unprotected. <laughs> unprotected hand holding. Um, and Gambit feels kind of cucked as he's uh, waiting outside of the Xavier's office and he has the Queen of Hearts and he drops it because mm. Rogue is his heart. It's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Heartbreaking That's times. Yeah. That's his queen. So as uh, Jean is finishing up reading the note, everybody is in the uh, the living area and listening and uh, kind of responding after hearing the note. We have Jubilee is crying and stuff. But then Morph is trying to be the positive person, trying to make everybody laugh. And that uh, story, she says, he says that Storm will get one, a couple of days with the normies and she'll come running back. I'll tell you. And then we get a, a, the ring of the doorbell and he runs to the doorbell thinking that is storm and see she's back and he says jean and it's a uh, jean gray an exacerbated jean gray at the door and she passes out in his arms and says i need the x-men and we get scott who's holding nathan summers and says jean with the other jean behind him with a look of either confusion or anger i don't know you can interpret it in different ways wendy what did you think about this ending with the storm note and then the ending with the with the shock cliffhanger of a second Jean Grey? Well, first, the letter was so sad. I was just like, oh, like, no, don't leave. But I can understand why she like, you know, she had to leave, like why she ended up leaving. I, I can understand um, the like just seeing everybody's reaction to it was really sad. I thought it was really cute with the whole like morph, like trying to like make Wolverine better and, you know, trying to lift his spirits in the best ways by turning into his enemy, Sabretooth. Like, I thought that was funny. Um, the Rogue and Magneto, as you said, unprotected hand holding. What the hell? Trifling, shady <laughs> Rogue you are. How dare you? How dare you do that to Gambit? How dare you? And seeing Gambit just like seeing it, like seeing her leaving the room and like, and him dropping his queen of hearts. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, I feel sad for Gambit, like poor Gambit. Like have him find, like, you know what? Move on from her, Gambit, find somebody else that really cares about you, that is loyal, like find somebody else, you know? Um, and then, you know, Morph just like trying to make things like trying to make, th trying to lighten things up and just, you know, um, like just saying like, oh, like, don't worry, she's going to come back. Like, you know, this is not the last time Like, she's definitely going to come back. And then comes out when he opens his door and you see Jean, you're like, wait, what? Like, hold on. I That's the whole, what the WTF moment for me. That yes. was the WTF moment. Cause I'm like, wait a minute. How is there two genes? Like, what? Like, and that makes me question also, first of all, how did that other gene got pregnant? Like, was it? I mean, she got pregnant from Scott. Scott got her definitely pregnant. It's definitely Scott's kid. But, like, all right. So, how does so. that work? Like, so and, then also, and then, wait, and then one more thing. And then, that, and then when Gambit was saying, was telling Magneto, like, oh, like, that was supposed to be for you. Like, and I'm like, you know what? You just like he deserves that. It's like my, like he deserves that. I'm sorry, like bro, like you had somebody get like come in front of you and literally took that blast over you, like, sir, like are you like no, like do you definitely deserve that? I'm sorry. I, so this is the whole what the like W T. So when I saw the um the trailer. With the scene that has the whole team uh, going into the office when Magneto shows up and they showed the pregnant Jean Grey, I immediately was like, oh shit, we are doing one of one of the crazy storylines because there's no there's no real reality where Jean and Scott have had a kid together. Mm -hmm. This had to be when I saw that, immediately most people thought it was Madeline Pryor. 
So to explain the Madeline Pryor story from the comic books, uh, Jean basically after the whole Phoenix saga, when Jean's uh, body is, you know, has to take away the Phoenix force and she's died, she goes away. She eventually shows back up at the at the bottom of the ocean and she gets swept back up and she's still alive. But she's dead for a, for a period of time, and Scott's very depressed. But then he meets a clone of Jean Grey, someone that looks very familiar to Jean Grey, but it's actually a clone of Jean Grey by the name of Madeline Pryor. Now, you see, Mr. Sinister is the one that clones Jean Grey and creates Madeline Pryor. So when the Phoenix Force leaves uh, Jean's body and she dies and uh, winds up at the bottom of the ocean... The Phoenix Force also goes into Madeline Pryor and brings her alive. So he makes the clone, and it's only brought to life by the Phoenix Force. And then it meets Scott. They fall in love. They have a baby together. But when she's pregnant, Jean shows back up. G uh, Scott chooses Jean, the real Jean over fake Jean, Madeline Pryor, which leads to her going crazy, having the baby, uh, becoming the Goblin Queen, and going off on the X-Men. So I think that's where we're going. I think that's where we're going. But the crazy part about all of this is that the Phoenix Saga in the animated series happened in season three. So you're telling me that we've gone down three fucking seasons with Madeline Pryor and did not know it? Because that's what it that's what it, it would elude us, it eluded me to think as soon as we saw this ending, I was like, wait, so G this has not been Gene. For like two seasons of the animated series? Because the Phoenix saga happens in season three. So you're telling me when the Phoenix, because they split it up where they do a five part Phoenix saga, and then they have a couple of episodes in between where Jean's gone and she, she's supposedly supposed to be dead. And then she comes back as the Dark Phoenix, and they have the Dark Phoenix Saga, which is a four part series. And then at the end of it, the Phoenix Force leaves her body. And uh, the X-Men have to use their forces, their life forces, to bring her back to life. So that gene that comes back in the Dark Phoenix, I think that's 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 Madeline Pryor. So since season three, it's been Madeline Pryor thinking that she's Jean Grey this whole time. So that makes sense as to why when she was in um in the first episode, when she like she said like she felt something is gonna happen. Yes, that's probably and, what it was. And you know, we really haven't talked about the intros because you know they, we we love the song. We talked about how much we love the song, but they give us a different intro now, where they go through the whole team. The whole team has a different order now because I think the first episode was the original order of Cyclops, Storm, Wolverine, mm -hmm. Jean, that blah 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 blah. Uh, but in the second episode, they change it because now and Magneto is the leader. So we see Magneto first, then Cyclops, then Gene, then Storm, then Wolverine, Jubilee, Beast, uh, Rogue, all of them, uh, whatnot. So, uh, but when during the little end, during the part after they do the little name tags for everybody, they show uh, Morph in Morph's little scene where they show Morph, they show in his eye, Mr. Sinister. So, Mr. Sinister, I think is going to be the big bad of this season one. Because we got Madeline Pryor. We got the tease of him in the intro. Morph still here. Morph is probably still have PTSD and brainwashed from Mr. Sinister from the animated series. There's a lot of elements that makes me think Mr. Sinister is going to be a part of all of this. Which Morph being, <clears throat> having that connection to Mr. Sinister could be the way that he keeps his eye on the X-Men and the rest of the team or everything that's going on with them. Mm. So Could be also true. Could be also true. But yeah, what did you think about this ending with the two Jean Grey's nests? It was it was weird, but I'm just like, I'm here for everything that's going on with it. Um I actually I didn't well didn't remember of the Madeline Pryor part of the X-Men history. So that's actually very informative to me. And I also just like Wendy Wendy said when um Jean the the I guess fake Jean Grey uh read um the executioner's mind or no, not executioner um Guy Rich uh, Guy Rich's mind, you know, he might have had some contact with Mr. Sinister as well. Um it could be a lot, it could be going on. So that's probably what she like what she that 
alert that went off and like shocked her and shit like that. So I'm here for anything. Man. I'm just I'm 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 excited. I'm excited. I'm gonna see where it goes. I was very excited by this ending. I was like, oh shit, they gave us the straight out of the soap operas ending. Yeah. It's like we don't know, we don't know this young baby's mother. Is the mother really Jean Grey? Is it Madeline Pryor? This man cheated on Gene with a clone of Gene. <laughs> and it wasn't even his fault. You know, he just as as he's as like, he it's was. like my my dick could have told the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, like, well, technically, I'm like, well, technically, Gene, she is you, so I didn't really cheat. She ain't trying to hear that shit. <laughs> He's like, my dude didn't tell the difference. What are you talking about? It's like an identical twin. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you got David, <laughs> David saying the same thing. He said, every man needs that kind of cheating excuse. Oh, sorry, honey. I didn't know she was a clone, but she performed in bed like you, so I thought it was your ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's such a, that's, that's such a, a guy response. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. We got Viola B. It says in the comics, both uh, Scott and Jean's families were carefully bred to create Scott and Jean at least a century. Yeah, because we get that in the second to last episode of the animated series, we get the origin story of Mr. Sinister, and he was uh, Dr. Uh, Nathaniel X's, and he went out with uh, uh, an ancestor of Jean Grey, Rebecca Grey. And that's how he basically became obsessed with Jean's gene pool. And then she, then he discovered the Summers family and basically has been following Scott and Jean since they were kids. Damn. He, want, he wants their baby to create a whole mutant, a new mutant race. So that's why now, now he's going to be trying to go after Nathan Summers, which is, or it's either going to be him or Magneto that probably gives Nathan Summers the virus, which he has to go back in time to become Cable. Yeah. That's also from the comics. So we're going to get a bunch of comic book stories in this season. I'm like, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Uh, but yes, uh, a bunch of great comments, but I very much enjoyed the first two episodes. So for episode two, Ness, out of ten, what did you give it? I give it a nine. I enjoyed it. It was the a little bit, a little bit less action, except for like the the courthouse scene. But it was just more so informative and a lot of more emotion put in it put into it with you know Magneto and Rogues, uh, relation full past relationship, uh, Gene having the baby, the the original Gene showing up, the clone just being shocked, um, Storm losing her powers. So it was like. It was an emotional roller coaster in this episode. Absolutely agree, Wendy. Oh, I give it a nine. I would have gave it like like Ness said. It was not as much action as you would expect it, except for the court scene. Um, I would have gave it a ten, unfortunately, but uh, the whole "how dare you take away Storm's powers" disrespectful. Um, the whole rogue and Magneto, excuse me, like past, <laughs> I'm sorry. And the WTF moment with the two dreams, like what? I I give it a nine. I'm sorry. It, it would have been a 10, but that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go nine and a half out of 10. If the first episode gave me what, I, what, you know, uh, a six, seven, eight year old SP three would have wanted episode two gave me what 35 year old SP three was. I want the drama. I want the, the horny soap popper that I used to read as a kid. And I was just into the pictures. I wasn't into the stories, but all the stories were there. And yes, I was very much invested in this whether it was the rogue Magneto uh, Gambit uh, love triangle, whether it was, uh, you know, Morph and Wolverine, whether it was the Magneto trial, whether it was Storm being depowered, and we know she's going to be on a great arc this season as well. And then the last, the, the final moment was the two genes. I was like, oh, mic drop. Yeah, yeah, Marvel's back. 
Marvel's back. I was like, Marvel's back with that one. I was like, every, I knew the whole social media would be talking about it, and that's what it's been ever since the premiere. So nine and a half out of ten. I'm still leaving it room for the ten out of ten where they put the action with the drama in perfect formation. Uh, we got here in the chat, uh, David Hall says, it seems like every man on the show is obsessed with Jean. Her body is a dick magnet. <laughs> Jesus! Uh, you got, <laughs> he also says they made, you notice they made the black superhero to be the first casualty to lose their powers. Had to be the sister. Had to be the sister. MVP of season one, episode two, Wendy. Oh man. Um uh, damn. Um Magneto. That is fair. Magneto is a good choice. Ness. That's where I'm at right now. You you brought up some very good points, some very good theories. And until they pan out, I gotta rem I gotta say that this guy is still a a good guy. So Magneto for me. Hey, he don't have to be a good guy to get MVP. So oh, MVP yeah, for me. I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, the way it's rolling now, I'm like, oh, you're you're you seem reformed. So yeah, but then it's gonna probably down the line. I'm gonna be eating these words in a couple episodes of the review. So <laughs> MVP for me is Magneto for orchestrating what he went down and completing his goal. He completed his goal. So that's why he gets MVP for me. LVP. Sorry, Gambit. <laughs> that's Wendy. <laughs> both, of you, both of you can't talk. <laughs> both of you are big and Gambit fans are like, are like shit. I mean, I can't even argue with the, with the logic I can, here. I can. Um, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I I was gonna say Storm, but she did something noble. So, and she and she did that herself. So I can't really yes. call her a loser. Gambit, a loser. I mean, although it's not his fault, he just uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it ain't looking too good. It ain't looking too good for Gambit. He got cocked. Got cut. Yeah, um, yeah, I gotta go with Gambit as well. Wendy. Yeah. Well, I would uh, I would say Gambit, but I'm gonna go with Rogue. How dare you? How dare you do that to Gambit? What's wrong with you, girl? First of all, Gambit is fine. He got great stars. Like, hello, he worships the wor like he worships you. What's wrong? Like, why like you don't even know what Magneto's true intentions. He could be using you. He he has a way with words. He's charming. Like, if a guy is charming and he knows how to speak and he has a way with his words, like, it, girls will definitely, like, like bait and be like, oh my God, he's so sweet. Like, I, oh, I love how he speaks to me, this and that. But you don't know for sure his real intentions with you. And you also, you also have to think about the fact because Magneto is probably using his powers to have like a magnetic field to actually yes. touch her, her skin. Yes. What, what's Gambit's power again? Doesn't he have like an energy power? But she's never willing to even try that with him. Yeah. But she did it with Magneto. Yeah. I, that's an extra, extra reason why he's the LVP. Yeah, mm. like what girl? Like what like what why are you like if he, you have a guy that's willing to let you touch him, like and he don't care if you take his powers or whatever, like he's like he's willing to. And then you actually let another man touch you. Like that, and you don't even know his true intentions. Like, hello, yeah, and he's old. What the? His hand don't even feel that good. Like, yeah, what are we he talking? Your, he could be your daddy. He could be your grandfather. Shit. Like, she's okay. I mean, she's okay with him being her daddy. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Like, girl, no, you're my LVP. I'm sorry. I feel bad for Gambit. Like, I have a sweet spot for Gambit. I'm sorry. But, girl, I love it. 
I have a sweet spot for Gambit. I'm sorry, girl, you're LVP. I'm sorry. I love it. I respect it. I respect it. I had so much fun talking about X-Men 97 episodes one and two with y'all. If you if you're if you're willing to, I say we do it again for episode three. And maybe we can we won't do it. We won't have a two hour podcast because we're only going to do one episode. So there you go. We'll do it again for episode three, maybe next week around the same time. If y'all like it, show that you like it. Drop the thumbs up. We had over 200 people watching us over on the Twitter. If you could jump on over to the YouTube channel, drop the thumbs up over there. We appreciate all the support, all the feedback in the live chat. If you're watching us on Twitter, you can also sound off in the live chat as well or sound or go to YouTube and sound off over there and let us know if you're watching on demand. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought about X-Men 97 episodes one and two. Wendy, want to give you the floor, let everybody know where they could follow you on social media and any final words about episodes one and two and the series overall X-Men 97. Oh, so, Okay. <clears throat> So with the X-Men 97, I loved it. I can't wait for the next episode. I'm so eager to figure out like what is going what's going to happen. I'm I can't wait. I can't wait. Um watching like I said watching it again a second time and not watching it by myself, watching it with Josh was like and seeing his reaction to it, oh, like this is going to be a really good show. Definitely going to be a really good show. Uh, but yeah, you can find me only on Instagram at evelise 21 I pop here and there with the watch-alongs, pay-per-view watch-alongs. Um, if not me, you could definitely catch my lovely fiance, the True Jaw Josh, at jmpunk321. He's not here right now. He's at a co um, convention in uh, White Plains. But you'll definitely catch him on um, Elite Heat. Uh also, congratulations to him for being the uh, like third host of the flagship show, True Heel He. So happy for him. Um, and yeah, catch us, ca catch us on watch-alongs, reviews, previews, the sports channel. Um, definitely catch us on more of these episodes, like next week. Can't wait. Hopefully, I'm here for that. Maybe Absolutely. I can talk about more how horrible of a person Rogue is. <laughs> the rivalry that has been born here, folks. Rogue versus <laughs> Wendy. It has begun. Yes, join us next week, Wendy, for sure. Uh, Ness, let everybody know where they can follow you and any final words about X-Men 97. Well, like I said many times, this series has brought me back to where I was as a child, just being able to have it now as an adult and enjoy it. Not only for myself, I was going to let my son watch it with me because he has no idea who the X-Men are. He's heavy into Marvel. He just hasn't gotten to the X-Men yet. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to break him, bring him into the lore of who the X-Men are. He only knows Wolverine, but I'm going to, I'm going to put him onto the whole team, but uh, yeah, we're definitely going to do this more. So another episode or any other uh, Marvel shows that they'll have going forward. I'm down for reviews. Huge Marvel fan. It's always been a, been a lot of fun on here with the true Mrs. True Draw, Wendy, and SP3. Going forward, you guys can catch me on Elite Heat uh, and Total Nonstop Blunts. We watch uh, Impact or TNA Impact every Thursday. You can catch us on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, X, if you uh, like to call it that. And you can follow me on Instagram and X at skinny underscore underscore Kravitz. And I'm going to try to be on Elite Heat this week. But if not, definitely we will be having um, Total Nonstop Blunts this Thursday. There you go. Be on the lookout for all of that. Yes, indeed. You can follow me on the Twitter machine at True Hill SP3. Follow the gang Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at True Hill Heat. Patreon.com forward slash True Hill Heat. We got plenty of great content over there, as well as the True Hill Heat Prediction Championship. And check out all the great stuff we got on the sports and entertainment channel right now, like our X Men, uh, everything you need to know before you watch the series. If you have 
haven't watched it already, you can watch this and then check out the premiere episodes of episodes one and two for X-Men 97. I give you a rundown of the important plot points and everything you need to know. So check that out. Nice little compact video for you. Check out our longer video on our character tier list for all the power characters from seasons one through six, as well as power book two ghosts. We did a tier list of that. So check that out right now as well. And we're going to have plenty of X-Men content for you to enjoy, like our X-Men characters ranked i think we're gonna do that later on i think we're gonna do that later on during the x-men series so this will be based on the animated series and x-men 97 we're also gonna do a review of x-men the animated series seasons one through five so you could have a quick rundown of everything that went down in the animated series and check out over on the wrestling channel true hill heat flagship podcast with myself the true jaw josh and even top guy jj doing a run-in to talk about this week in wrestling ronda rousey shooting on wwe and jack perry shooting on aew so check that out right now but me wendy and that's it sounds like we will be back with you next week to review episode three so go back and rewatch it because i'm probably gonna rewatch episodes one and two again right after this so <laughs> Like, comment, share, subscribe for Wendy Furness. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. This has been our X-Men 97 Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2 Review. We are signing off until next time.